You're listening to Torpedo Fish Radio, crossing the great divide between one mind and another. I'm here with Nika Noel, and uh, we're in a house in Southern California uh, where she just filmed um, a lesbian porn scene, and um, she's very tired because uh, she's been <laughs> here all day, and she was holding the, okay. the camera. Um, and Nika, if you could just say a little bit about uh, who you are and what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I am a, an adult film director. And I, uh, I create movies um, that have storylines, little, little movies that have stories and, and uh, hopefully beautiful imagery and also explicit sex scenes. And, um, you know, I was thinking as we were watching that, that um, porn has a certain, there's certain conventions that apply um are there i mean i guess there's kind of like they follow a certain pattern normally like what regular would you say? porn films well including yours so what would be <clears throat> some of the ingredients that yours have that, oh i see yes um like structurally like let's right well i try to get away from structure per se but there are certain principles that i try to to maintain in my movies and that would be uh Authentic sex, Mm -hmm. real sex positions, not just positions that are good for the camera, but Mm -hmm. that are good for the people actually engaged in in the encounter. And, um, you know, something that's that's true that people can look at. And even if the story is, you know, sometimes a little far fetched, obviously, Mm -hmm. or things move a lot faster in porn than they might in real life. And Uh there's really very little that we can do about that. But, um, but where people could go, you know, I kind of relate to that or I had an experience like that. I, I draw a lot from my own life, particularly with, um, my lesbian porn movies. Can you say a little bit more about that? Like what I draw from? Yeah. Well, one thing I wanted to get to eventually was, uh, I became aware of your work a couple of years ago and I think at the time you do a lot of blogging mm. <laughs> and you had been blogging about how you had um, suddenly decided that you wanted to do boy girl mm-hmm. porn and it was like a really big transition for you and you seem yes. seemed, so I was curious about what that means to you and um, sure. why that was such a, a momentous thing um number one I never watched boy girl porn or enjoyed boy girl porn Mm -hmm. so I read boy girl erotica but the only movies that I really liked to watch were girl girl and I think that's well I know it's because I didn't like the way that the sex was portrayed between men and women in porn films in what way it was very impersonal Mm -hmm. It was, it looked uncomfortable Hmm. a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. And the men didn't seem like people Mm -hmm. to me. Often you couldn't even see their faces Mm -hmm. for most of the scene. And, um, you know, they're they're just seem, they all seem to be the same person really. (laughs) It was like, they were very interchangeable. The the look of the porn actor Mm -hmm. seemed to be, you know, kind of shaved down and, oiled up and you know hairless Mm -hmm. and headless Mm -hmm. and uh you know very um very coarse Mm. I thought um none of the things that really turned me on about having sex with a man were portrayed in boy girl porn even the kind that um, like Candida Royale makes, you know, they're for Here's women. Here's the thing, and I, yeah. I you know, I, I love Candida. Uh-huh. Um, I don't need pretty soft sex hmm. necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know like Playboy and Penthouse and whatever, you know, they, they do more pretty stuff mm-hmm. and more. Um, I wanted to see really raw, passionate, very intense sex between men and women that also 
contained kissing, lots of kissing, real kissing, um, real intimacy, real body to body contact. And no, I, I couldn't find that anywhere. And that's not to take a credit away from anybody else. It's just that what turned me on wasn't available. So, so, so you're, that's pretty neat, actually, that you're, <laughs> do you often feel like you achieve that? In your I do. There, there are times, not all the time, uh -huh. not every scene. Um, there are performers that um, are capable of doing it, mm -hmm. and uh, definitely. I mean, I've I've been thrilled by what is possible, and just the fact that you know the reaction has been so strong to it because everybody was telling me that. Yeah, I mean, the performers really. They really reacted immediately because they felt so good about what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And um, and then also the audience, you know, because a lot of people told me, oh, lesbian porn director, you don't understand how boy girl movies are made and this oh, okay. is not going to work. You uh -huh. can't do this. Huh. Your style of lesbian porn is uh, different from both um, what... I consider, you know, really mainstream, um, mm -hmm. uh, clearly for men. Right. And uh, often the women are, um, they really don't seem like they're into it that much. Mm -hmm. They seem like right. uh, they're often, you know, mugging for the camera, giggling. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I've ever noticed that Posing. their bodies are always very far apart. Like yeah. when they're kissing, they're, they, you know. Yeah. yeah. So there's that side. And, um, and then on the other end of the spectrum is sort of... Um, porn that's made by lesbians for lesbians but mm -hmm. man it's just not hot i don't know it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like right like, it's more of like a political thing it's a political or a, statement yeah, they're they're bringing too much other stuff to the table yeah. rather than and just they're the just hot sex yeah i mean mm -hmm. i know there's this one that i saw <laughs> and um there were these two women and i think they're actually a couple and it showed them you know they're both kind of like not attractive and you know <laughs> You know, they're both sort of identically androgynous, which to me, right, I don't right. find that hot at all. Right. Um, and they were sort of like lighting a little candle and, mm, you know, it's okay, just like, so. Uh. so anyway, your broad sort of genre, I, uh -huh. the, I think the first type of lesbian porn that I saw of this type was Viv Thomas style yeah, porn. Yeah. Um, very popular. Where, you know, the women are very beautiful. They're mm -hmm. Hungarian, I think, yeah, most of them. Yeah. And they're clearly uh, climaxing. and mm -hmm. But yet they still don't... There's no aspect of predation to it. I, that's Right. You know what I mean? <clears throat> sure. Like, Absolutely. Where they're very beautiful and they're having mm -hmm. sex. They're touching each other. It's not like the fake, fake. Mm -hmm. But it's still very... There's something right. The psychological about it. component is missing. It's just two really beautiful women kind right. of touching each other and being very sensual about it, and all of that's really, really nice. But you know, I find with with porn that it's not really satisfying to me unless there's some sort of psychological component mm -hmm. to it. So that's what I always try to create. You know, and so you became a director through having been a performer first. Is yes. That right? Yes. So can for a short period of time. A short period of time. Before so, I started directing as well as performing, it was pretty quick. Wow. So can yeah. you talk about your sort of history in, in terms sure. of... Sure. Um, I was a journalist. Uh, I mean, I had always been in the adult uh, industry in one way or another from the time I was 18. Hmm. I was always drawn to it. I hmm. was always compelled by it. I always felt like that was something I needed to have in my life and explore. And... Um, but I'd never done porn movies, mm -hmm. but I was working as a journalist and one of my assignments was for Spread Magazine and I was supposed to write an article about the experience of doing a fetish video. So I needed to find a fetish video to do and I didn't want to have sex with men and I just, you know, I hadn't done porn movies and I just really... I was like, okay, let me find something that I could handle. So I found um, Kelly Payne in Staten Island. She was a, she had a site called Tantrum Trainers, and she did spankings. So I thought, oh, okay, I'm cool with being spanked. Little did I know what a spanking in the fetish world really is. What, is that? <laughs> what does that mean? It's, um, it's a lot more intense 
and prolonged than anything you might imagine when you just hear the word spanking. It's Mm -hmm. not the spanking your mom gave you. Mm. And if she did give it to you, she's probably in jail. (laughs) So (laughs) So it was really brutal. It was very brutal. Um, But I don't say that with any... uh, regrets for having done it because actually it was it was an eye opener for me I am um, you know I didn't know what safe words were so I didn't have one <laughs> um, had no idea what I was getting into basically and um so she gave me the spanking of my life and you know I'm very fair-skinned uh-huh. and I had never my, my ass hadn't developed any resistance to spankings you know this was my first serious serious spanking so it was half an hour straight no stopping of hands, uh, cane, floggers, paddle, and it was super intense. And she stopped because I was starting to bleed. Oh, wow. And so the thing that was interesting to me is the exhilaration that I felt. And I couldn't sit down for a couple days at all. I mean, I really literally couldn't sit down. Um, But when I left there, I felt perfectly chemically balanced. I just felt my ass was killing me, right. but I I just felt so happy. Really? I felt like, isn't life great? Like, I just, I felt you really... have any idea why? Can you explain? I, I guess the adrenaline rush and mm-hmm. just the, you know, you are really in the moment when you're being spanked. Your mind doesn't wander. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're right there. And I think that there is something about that immediacy of the moment. And just really being, you know, I think humans look for that, something that will bring their attention to the present, whether it's meditation or uh, it's, you know, the fight or flight response. It just brings us right to, you know, we all have a tendency to wander into our own thoughts. And I think that that, uh, we're always looking for something that brings us back to the present and that there is a certain sense of exhilaration when we're really, truly in the moment. And that's why people love things like, you know, surfing or Mm -hmm. you know things where you're just really right there in the moment it has your complete attention martial arts Mm -hmm. you know right which Um, you do which I also do and some of us you know are probably drawn to that a little bit more um than Uh others and some of us are drawn to it you know the extreme ends of things a little bit more than others and that was sort of an eye-opener for me because I felt great about it Uh I you know, a lot of people tell me like, oh, I, you know, I had did a fetish video and I got a the, the really bad spanking and I start crying. I was nowhere near crying. Hmm. I mean, because they're like, oh, it's a, this emotional thing when somebody's hurting you that bad. Not for me. So you didn't so, feel like you had to hold back tears. You didn't even no. feel. Huh. I was fine. <laughs> Do you think that gave fine. you a feeling of strength, like you might be able to withstand other kinds of pain? It really or? wasn't about that. It oh. was just, I was just really surprised. I was like, you know, I was surprised that I wasn't the one that it never occurred to me to stop it. She was like, we have to stop. You're starting to bleed. I wouldn't have stopped it. I was just really right there in the moment. There was no psychological problem for me. There was no physical problem for me. So, and I, I found it to be a positive experience. I wrote the article about it. Um, and from that movie, I got other offers. And I decided to, since it had been a good experience, I, I decided to do some girl-girl work. And that's how I started doing some lesbian porn. And then uh, the company that I was working for uh, wanted me to to uh it was sort of um the studio I was working for had sort of plateaued and um the studio uh now let's I'm not mm -hmm. sure what are you talking did you skip over starting lesbian porn starting girl girl porn that was at girlfriend's films okay so yeah but the fetish movie was that that was separate that was just yeah that was just that wasn't sex that was just spanking and stuff so did girlfriends get in touch with you? No, I was introduced to them by an agent when uh-huh. I started, when an agent contacted me after seeing the movie. Um, and uh, I was introduced to girlfriends. And uh, so I started performing for them. And the owner said, you know, we're, we're kind of, we've kind of plateaued. I feel like we... We need a shot in the arm. I'm mm-hmm. running out of ideas. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, he was just like, do you want to come in and do something with this? And 
I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'd love to try, you know. So, um, so I started writing movies and directing them and going on the forums, talking to the fans. And, uh, yeah, it, it got a huge response. My movies did really well. Um, when was that? 2006. Mm-hmm. So had you ever directed a movie at all before? No. And how did you learn how to do that? Did you read about I it? I watched what um, what Dan was doing in terms of the technical stuff. And Dan is? Is the owner of Girlfriends. Okay. Um, so there were certain things I had no experience with, like mm-hmm. the cameras, you know, the lights, stuff like that. Um, but Dan and I had very different styles. Mm-hmm. So In terms of? What we saw. What oh. we saw, how we, you know, I immediately started saying, well, no, I, I don't want the wide shot. I want the shot of her, her mouth close up as she's talking. I want, oh. you know, the, the other person, the other woman is zeroing in on her mouth. I want to show that. I wanted to show it from the other character's perspective a lot more. I, I had ideas. I had visuals of how I wanted it to appear. And... um So I very quickly realized that, you know, I knew what I wanted to see once Mm -hmm. I was given the reins to, you know, it was sort of like, it's every person's dream from what I can tell, create your own porn movie. What do you want to see? You can do it. Mm -hmm. You can make that movie. (laughs) And it's just like, who doesn't want to do that? Uh Everybody wants to do that. So So, uh, now did Dan let you do what you wanted? He did. did. He did let me do what I wanted. Um, to a point, I mean, you know, obviously once I started becoming very well known and my my movies that my name were my name was on the box cover written and directed by, you know, and so people started thinking that I was running the company, that mm. the company was mine, I was getting a lot of attention, Dan wasn't really okay with that, and we parted ways. So how many movies did you perform in before I mean how many have you performed in total? Do you know? Oh, I don't know. Not like hundreds or anything like that. More oh. like, more like a couple dozen, maybe, maybe thirty. I don't know. Do you like performing? In- I do. Uh-huh. I like performing. It's it's harder now to perform because I have other things that I've got to worry about. So when I'm performing, obviously, I'm not behind the camera. I'm not overseeing the whole operation because I've got to be really in the moment and engaged in the scene. So that means I have to, you know, um, have my crew take care of everything else. And, you know, it's, we have a small crew, so that can be difficult. And I try not to perform that often for that reason. Is it, um, is it hard to get all these other people standing around out of your head? How do you, do you ignore them or do you kind of Uh, work them in, in your mind? You know what I mean? That's a really good question because I think um, the answer is probably a little more complicated than than a lot of people uh, really communicate when they're asked that question. Mm-hmm. To some extent, you forget mm-hmm. uh, when you're really involved with your partner. You can't forget totally. Um, obviously, there are going to be call-ins that are done sometimes, you know. And what's that? Um, directions. Um, if you have done something like you're you're positioned in such a way that the only way to shoot what you're doing is to shoot against the light and the light stand and it's just you know you you need to move to a different area on the Uh bed for technical reasons um there's stuff like that or if somebody's hair is just completely obscuring the shot and obscuring their face you might call in you know flip your hair when Mm -hmm. you get a chance stuff like that so you you do have to have some portion of your mind on the technical aspects of it. Um, But also you're left alone a great deal of the time too, to, um, you you know, nobody's saying anything. You're not hearing any noise. So it's easy to forget that you've Hmm. got people there. If you're really engaged, if you're capable of really focusing on that other person. I mean, I've had sex partners in real life that can't turn off their brain Mm -hmm. no matter what. And we're alone in the room and it's dark and their brain is still going a mile a minute. I know other people that can have a room full of observers while they're having sex and they really don't focus on that. They focus on their partner. So Mm -hmm. a lot of it has to do with your own ability to focus Um, but it's different. I mean, what it does is if you 
if you're kind of turned on by having sex in front of other mm-hmm. people, if you've got that sort of sense of exhibitionism, it can add to your excitement or it can take away from it. If you know, you're just like, boy, I'd really like to be alone with this person. And instead I'm in this room with all these people, you know, so it, it really depends. Does that ever happen? Like, you know, how do you, I guess one thing that I've wondered is about how where, where boundaries come in. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, I know that when, especially for women, when you have an orgasm, there's like chemical reactions in your brain sure. that makes you feel attachment to another person. Mm-hmm. I mean, does that get in the way? Does that, is that a danger, an occupational hazard? When you're doing, <sighs> uh, I think things that the honest answer is that you really, you you come to be wired differently hmm. when you are doing porn. Um there are many porn performers that simply don't have orgasms because mm-hmm. they never really let themselves go enough because they're always at least somewhat aware of the fact that there are people in the room and they just, you know, they don't do it or they're aware that they can't just, you know, maybe in real life it takes them 45 minutes of getting oral to come and, mm-hmm. you know, they're sort of thinking, gee, I can't just have the whole scene be about me getting oral, so mm-hmm. I better... I better just move on to another position and Mm -hmm. fake my orgasm. I mean, this goes on. I'd be lying if I said that everybody is always having real orgasms. But but at the same time, I think that there are adult performers that are a lot more in touch with their ability to orgasm Mm -hmm. and that are comfortable saying, no, do this. You know, sometimes in Mm -hmm. real life, people aren't comfortable telling their lovers what they want. People in porn are a lot more comfortable. Going like, no, go slower, go lighter, go faster, but not harder. You know, mm-hmm. they, they give really detailed instructions so that they can get off. Mm-hmm. And they're like, accustomed to having orgasms with different people. It doesn't make that attachment thing kick in. Really? Yeah. No. Uh, it just doesn't even. No. Wow. You know, no, I, th- I think sometimes too, honestly, sometimes I've had an easier time having orgasms with people I'm not that emotionally involved mm-hmm. with, you know, um, because it's just more physical. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it really just depends on the wiring of the person. If you're somebody that's prone to, to feel a lot of attachment, if somebody brings you to an orgasm, I think that even if you are that type of person, spend a year in porn and you may not be. Mm. <laughs> so I was wondering, are there any kind of rules of etiquette or, you know, what's a faux pas? Uh, what's a porn yeah. faux pas? Well, <laughs> it's considered, you know, somewhat bad manners to try to hit on your co-star mm-hmm. um, either before or after the scene and try and turn it into something that crosses the boundary into real life. I mean, you know, you have to respect that people are working with other people you know often every day and uh it's important to their own sense of of self-preservation and whatever relationships they may have off camera that they be able to come and uh you know perform and access that side of their sexuality for a limited period of time and then leave it at the office so to speak and go Mm -hmm. home to their real life so if you're trying to make something more out of it I would say particularly if uh, if it's a guy doing it with a girl, you better be pretty sure that she's interested in you and that she's giving you those signals because uh, cause it, it can get very awkward. I've had it happen to me, and I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I guess you wouldn't feel safe to... You have to be able to let yourself go to some yeah, extent. Yeah, you have to know that like, okay, I can really for for you know, for the next hour I'm in love with this person. Mm-hmm. And then I can go home and I can I can move on and I can, you know, focus on the next person I'm going to be with. I mean, it's very there's really no way to explain it in a way that doesn't sound kind of awful unless mm-hmm. you're unless you're doing it and then it all makes sense. But you know, I have to say that um I had mixed feelings about watching a scene live I, I was apprehensive <laughs> about it I mean partly I was worried that you know are they going to feel uncomfortable about right. having this, yeah. this person <laughs> here but I don't know I just think there was something I was scared or, or you know I don't know sure you're used to that being something private uh-huh um if you watch porn you're watching it on your computer or television and you know to actually be there when people are having sex is not something that a lot of us do you know unless we're swingers or something Uh like that you know it's 
mostly something we're not privy to with other people. But I really wanted to, because all the kind of questions that I had for, I thought I'm never going to really know unless I sure, unless I see it. And also I feel kind of like, you know, uh, if I'm going to watch this on my computer and I can't really, <laughs> I'm too scared to see it in real life, is that sort of hypocritical or something no I don't think it's hypocritical I think it just you know everybody has a different comfort zone and of course you know I've noticed that like I feel fine telling people I'm lesbian but to tell them that I like porn I that's a bigger there's a big stigma there's a big stigma attached to that I don't know if it's more because I'm a woman and you know but but what I was going to say no I think there's more of a stigma for men to say it really yeah and um and I don't really understand why that is but but what I was going to say is that it was um it was really moving in a way. I mean, it yeah. was kind of like I didn't know what the if there had been any more of a setup between the two of them before like I wasn't sure mm-hmm. and I wasn't sure what they were talking. I wasn't sure how much of it was part of the scene and how much they were just Yeah. But well, it um, was all very real in terms of, you know, this this movie the concept that Julie Ann herself came up with was that she was going to pick these girls mm-hmm. and the part that was already filmed is when every all the girls got together and they were all talking about what they like and how they feel. You know, Phoenix Marie felt, because she's known for her very hardcore boy-girl mm-hmm. anal scenes, mm-hmm. and she felt very much like, you know, nobody ever thinks of me for anything lovey-dovey or girl-girl because mm-hmm. I'm the big gonzo anal girl, and mm-hmm. so they just don't... I'm not the name that they think of when they think of romantic sex. So she felt like... She never really gets to experience that on mm-hmm. camera. And uh, if she's not in a relationship, she's not getting to experience any romantic, sensual sex. It's all very hardcore. So this scene was about exploring what Phoenix never really gets to experience and certainly not experience on film. Mm-hmm. So it, Yeah, it was, um, it was kind of like a... I was trying to think of how I would characterize it because it wasn't what I would call romantic. I mean, there wasn't a, mm-hmm. you know, it was, a, it's, it was almost like buddy sex in a way. Right. But, but it was really loving. I mean, it was, yeah. and, and actually when, when, when I was, I was listening to uh, the behind the scenes part afterwards and um, uh, Julianne was talking about how she had at one point, remember uh, she put her, uh, Phoenix Maria had her leg in a certain position mm-hmm. and uh, Julia Ann sort of pushed her off of that. Mm-hmm. And and um, she said, that's because that's one of your poses. Right. You know, and I wanted to get you out of that pose and mm-hmm. you were running away from me. You're running away mm-hmm. from uh, your orgasm. And, and she's like, yeah, you're right. You were. And, and she was determined to. I, was, I don't know. It was really neat. I thought that was yeah. cool. Julia is the real deal. She really is. She was yeah. profound. And she is. She's she's an incredible, incredible woman. I mean, I really, you know, I have to say when I'm, you know, the first prospect of working with Julia Ann, I'm like, oh, big porn star lady. You know, she's going to be, she's going to have all the limitations hmm. of a really super big what does that know, mean? porn superstar. Well, just that, you know, she had been trained to have sex a certain way. And then, hmm. you know, now we're doing it the real way. And hmm. she's probably from the old school. And, which you is, know, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Well, which means that it's very orchestrated and mm-hmm. it's very, you know, do three minutes of this, do four minutes of mm-hmm. that. And just look very, very pretty while you're moaning and mm-hmm. pretending to have an orgasm, all the things that, you know, we're sort of trying to uh, get rid of. And uh, boy, she she could teach me a thing or two, I'll tell you. She's incredible. She's amazing. She's definitely real. And and you could feel in the room, uh, there was a certain point where everything got really quiet mm-hmm. and still. Always and does. That was really... I thought yeah, that was really profound. Yeah, that's that's one thing. I mean, I think that, you know, I could I could, uh, you know, cry foul about the way that people uh, characterize porn and the stigma attached to it mm-hmm. and stuff. But a lot of it comes from the fact that people in porn are creating things that nobody can feel very good about. And so you're sort of guilty by association if you're like, well, I watch, you know, I watch a lot of, of porn because people have this association with porn as being dumb hmm. and fake and tacky and uh low production values hmm. and no uh you know very little uh 
you know, that's in terms of storyline or anything interesting, nothing interesting about it, just very, uh, sort of banal and, uh, and fake and just, uh, you know, icky, Mm -hmm. icky. And I think that the porn world, you know, you need to step it up a little bit and Mm. go, well, let's think about what we're doing here. Let's try to create something that, you know, that approaches art. And And how do you do that? How do you go about that? It's state of mind. You have to care. I Mm -hmm. mean, that's, you know, if you really care about what you're doing and, uh, you know, because I've had camera people in the past that I've worked with that are just like, no, Nika, you know, we won't be able to do this with a, you know, we've got to get the, them in this position so mm-hmm. that we can get this shot. And it's just like the, the mentality I feel should be like, no, we don't want to be limited by the old ways of doing things. Let's find a way to do something better. Let's try it. Let's improve it. Let's find a way to improve it. Let's, let's bring our ideas to life and honestly, it's hard. People get mad at you. They want to go really? home. You know, they well, you know, it's just like, geez, can't the we just do it? The or the crew. The I crew. mean, you know, can't, well, the performers love it when they just hear they can have normal sex. Really? You know, yeah, they love it. Um, of course, who wouldn't want to have comfortable, nice, intimate sex in a bed? I was just watching you film them and you were so, you were very still and you were intently focusing. And I was just thinking, what is she seeing? What were you wanting to see how what was that like uh there are certain things i like to make sure we capture mm-hmm. um in terms of um, i'm watching their facial expressions mm-hmm. i'm watching their body movements because i may want to focus in on something i don't want to miss anything also i'm trying to get uh, shots that are not hardcore just from a, a technical standpoint because we have another camera on hardcore so I want to get enough of the softcore shots what does that mean no uh, uh you know you, you you can't see pink basically <laughs> <laughs> you know mm-hmm. you, you so he's looking see. at he's seeing the whole tamale and mm-hmm. I'm seeing you know the hair or the you know but not really the the spread mm-hmm. you know uh eagle look mm-hmm. So, um, so there's technical thoughts in my mind and then there's, uh, artistic or stylistic concerns too. So, and then also, yeah, keep the camera steady. I've got Mm -hmm. to keep my mind on that as well. So there's a number of things going on. I often wonder, um, if sometimes I'll see a scene and I'll read someone else's impression. I'm like, that was so hot. You know, mm-hmm. like, I just didn't get I that. I didn't and see it. All yeah. of them, I wonder, but there have been, <laughs> there been a couple where I thought, okay, this is definitely beyond, this is reached beyond the normal. This is right. art. Right. And I often wonder, I can't imagine that the performers didn't feel it as well. Well, what you'll be surprised to hear, and this isn't all the time, but it's mm-hmm. sometimes, and it's more often than you, than you might think. Um, you know, it'll be the scenes where I go, oh, God, those two, they just didn't, that just didn't work. And there's all <laughs> kinds of problems with the scene and they uh-huh. don't like each other or something goes really? wrong. Or I just don't feel, I'm like, oh, geez, you know, that's the scene that everybody's like, oh, it's the best scene ever. Really? No. I'm always shocked by that. And I go, geez, it makes me feel like I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> now. When you then go and look at the scene afterwards, do you still feel like... I look at all the scenes. I mean, I look at them before they come out. So. But I mean, what I was going to ask is, when you look at it after the fact, do you see what the people are seeing no, or do you still I, see, I see it? I see it my way. I mean, uh-huh. I th- what what does sometimes surprise me, though, is if I think a scene is really incredible and then I watch it mm-hmm. and I go, wow, it didn't translate. Huh. You know, like the heat in the room, the energy in the room. It was like, geez, that was you, amazing. But, you know, then you watch it and you go, wow, it looks a little flat. You know, it's like being photogenic or mm-hmm. it's like, you know, there, there are those great Hollywood actresses where, you know, people say, oh, she was so she was so normal in real life. But mm-hmm. you watch her on camera and she's just bigger than life and she's magic and she's amazing or, you know, and you see that in porn, too. It, it's just the way it is. I mean, some people have star quality that only comes out on camera or huh. they, their energy is picked up by the camera, but you can't detect it in huh. the room as well. That's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting that you see that the camera sees something different a lot of the time uh, for better and for worse. 
Are there any performers that, you know, walking down the street, you wouldn't think of them as? So many, so many. There are those people that are just magic on film and that, uh, you know, in, in uh, mainstream films, it's just they have the perfect timing for their, you know, for comedy or for drama. They, mm-hmm. you know, they just, their timing is right. The math is right. And that's true of sex, too. They're, mm-hmm. the, they're just very, very gifted mm-hmm. sexual performers, mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. strange as that sounds. No, I um, totally yeah. know what you mean. I mean, yeah. um, to talk to people who um, maybe don't look at it the way we look at it as, as something that can be art or yeah. It's, it sounds silly. You know, I remember um, there was a Saturday Night Live routine once a couple of years ago where they were doing like Siskel and Ebert mm-hmm. watching gay porn. <laughs> no, that would be and, funny. And they would, you know, get to the the transition, you know, the two guys with no shirts on you know, a back rub. Mm-hmm. And then they cut to Siskel and Ebert. They'd be like wiping tears away. <laughs> but so I swear to God, there's but, some yeah, uh, there scenes that I've seen that really did make me sure. feel uh, that way. You know, everything is state of mind. You know, you can... I mean, you know, in literature, there's the there's the crap and there's Shakespeare. I mean, there's just anything, any type of cinema, any almost anything you can do. Mm-hmm. You can do something beautiful and amazing or you can do crap. I mean, it's the same thing with adult films. And uh, so you should always be striving, I think, to to try to get to close as close to art and authenticity and something real and something that that people feel touched by and there is certainly no reason why why sexual encounters should be precluded from you know being part of of that and Mm -hmm. being considered in that way you know other than just people being uncomfortable with sex or you know having these notions that there's just no way it should ever be captured on film but you know obviously we don't agree with that so do you ever feel that what you do um has a healing aspect um, I do. And I, I think, uh, especially these days when there's been so much bad porn and, and people do watch it and think, well, these are the professionals. Maybe I should have sex the way they're having mm. sex. And it's like, you don't understand the way they're having sex is for the camera's benefit. So that, you know, the reason why the, the guy isn't touching the girl is because the camera needs the shot, not mm-hmm. because that's the way to have good sex. Mm-hmm. So don't go home and have sex that way with your girlfriend, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So I think there is a, a public service aspect to just going here's here's the a, a way to have sex that doesn't involve uh acrobatics or novelty things or you know switching positions every three minutes mm-hmm. here's a, a way that you can feel like you're a good lover too mm-hmm. and it's the good old-fashioned way intimacy passion intensity all that what what are you most proud of in your career? Um, there are movies that I'm more and less proud of, but mm-hmm. there, I don't think there's one that really mm-hmm. stands out because there, you know, there are scenes that I think are magnificent in several different movies. It might not be, you know, the movie overall is better mm-hmm. than other movies, but there, are, there are scenes that are definitely special to me and that I feel like, you know, we, we really did it with that one. Everybody was, everybody was on the same page Mm -hmm. in terms of really wanting to create something special and it happened. And, and it does make me feel like, you know, maybe there will be a time when we, uh, as, as humans, as humans obviously need to watch each other having sex, we are aroused by it. We're interested in it. We're drawn to it. We're compelled by it. We're upset by it. We're, you know, it's obviously something really big in our lives and, um, that maybe there'll be a time when it's more accepted and that we can accept it in ourselves and accept it in other people and and not have to feel ashamed of of the fact that we watch you know other other people having sex thanks a lot nika thank uh, you 